In this video, we're going to help you to get set up to start running ray tracing in the Unreal Engine. You need to ensure that you're on at least Windows version RS5. You can do this by going to their website, which will have a link for it, and downloading the most recent update for Windows. To check which version you have, you can go to the Start menu here, type in Run, and then type in WinVer, W-I-N-V-E-R, and you'll see which version of Windows you're running. It needs to be at least version 1809, 1809, to be sure that you can run ray tracing. After Windows RS5 finishes installing, you're going to go ahead and set up the Epic Games Launcher. This is where you're going to launch the Unreal Engine and you can start using ray tracing from there. In order to set up the proper engine version, you'll click the plus button up at the top here and under the drop down menu, make sure you select at least version 4.22 as this is the only one currently that supports ray tracing. I don't have that option since it's already installed for me, but you'll see it on your end. After it finishes installing, we're going to go ahead and launch the engine. We can either do that by launching a new project or launching an existing project, as long as it's Unreal Engine 4.22. After your project's open, in order to enable ray tracing, we need to go to Settings at the top here and open Project Settings. You will have to do this each time you create a new project, but after you do it once, it's going to be set for the remainder of the project. Now we'll go down to Platforms and Windows. We're going to set the default RHI to DirectX 12. This will enable the graphics card to use the proper drivers to use ray tracing. Now we're going to go on up to the Engine category and open Rendering. From here, we're going to scroll almost all the way down to the bottom where you'll see ray tracing. Then you simply check this box that says ray tracing and uh, at the bottom here you'll get a notification that says a restart is required before it's activated. After we restart, it's enabled and you're good to go. Now that you've restarted the engine, ray tracing is activated. You may not be able to notice it immediately at first, so what we have to do is place a post-process volume. You can search over here on the left in the modes and simply drag and drop it into your scene. In the properties panel on the right, we're going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to where it says unbound, infinite unbound, which will allow you to use the post-process volume without having to be inside of it. If we scroll up a little bit, you'll see a lot of the rendering features that ray tracing allows you to use in the post-process volume, such as global illumination, which is going to give us some nicer shadows and ambient occlusion connecting things within the space. You'll also see ray tracing translucency, ray tracing reflections, and if we change our shadows here from hard shadows to area shadows, in both the ray tracing reflections and ray tracing translucency, we're going to get a lot more interesting shadows from our lights, depending if they're softer or harder, depending on the size of the light. If we go up here also to the ray tracing reflections, you can adjust your max roughness. What this does essentially is you're telling the Unreal Engine, based off of how shiny the surface is, should I use sphere reflection captures or should I calculate the bounces that ray tracing is going to enable. Adjusting this number to a lower value will give you better performance because you're calculating less rays throughout the space. If you scroll through all the different settings here and try adjusting the numbers, you'll find what works best for your environment. Try to find a good balance between a high quality of ray tracing and a good performance with the graphics card.